What's up YouTube? Welcome to this Game of Thrones episode 4 top 10 moments book changes in easter egg video. So my favourite bit of the episode was actually at the start where we see Sansa come in and greet Jon Snow. Yes this was an amazing episode and very very tear jerking. No I did not cry but I weeped a solemn tear of happiness. We saw big setup for the pink letter part of the books here. So the pink letter is a letter that was received by Jon Snow that you actually saw in the episode just past. However, in the books it is completely different. For one, Mance Raider is still alive. Mance Raider in the books is the one that the Boltons actually have at Winterfell instead of Jon Snow's half-brother. Now that is a big, big difference, actually, to be honest, than the show and the books. Also in the letter is the requests from Ramsay that the team of Jon Snow actually return to him Sansa and also give him Stannis, who he refers to as the False King, and also his Red Witch, which is Melisandre. So it has changed quite a lot, and after he reads the letter out to Tormund and his crew, he's actually murdered. So in the books, he is murdered after he reads the letter and says he will go to Winterfell and sort that shit right out. So it is a complete change for the books, and we are heading hard and fast past A Dance with Dragons, because this was at the end of the book. So we finally get to see what old Peter Baelish is up to, and I missed him. I really did miss him, because he is one of the best characters and actors on the show. And I loved how he kind of inserted the idea of helping Sansa without actually saying it to the little Lord of the Vale. And the guy who, well, we're not too sure if he did scream over here, but it will be very interesting to see how these two get on, because... They clearly do not like each other, and it's obvious that Peter Baelish can't be trusted to anyone who's smart or seen the world. But the little kid absolutely adores him, and just doesn't give a shit about his... I think he's the head of the army, so he wants to put him through the moon door, he just doesn't care. So, it's expertly crafted and woven by Peter Baelish to see how this will happen. And we can see that the Knights of the Vale will be heading down... Or up, sorry, to help Jon Snow inadvertently take back Winterfell. So I think we've got a peace between those two for now. However, I think that Peter Bailey still wants to take Sansa for his own. So Tyrion isn't doing too bad in the place of Daenerys. I mean, he's setting up a seven year peace to appease the slavers, yeah? Like that? No, I guess not. But I don't think this is really going to work, but it was, again, an expert piece of the episode, seeing someone who is so fantastic at manipulating people and working people to actually have it in practice and see it here was a lot of fun to see. So we're setting up Tyrion to have a fall here, I expect, because we've got Daenerys coming back after burning the whole of Vaidothrak, and, well, I think think that she is going to fuck shit up and kill everyone who is opposed to her free slavery ethos, which is going to be pretty damn cool, isn't it? Which, well, I'll talk about it in a couple of minutes. But, yeah, this was a cool episode, and it's interesting to see Grey Worm to say that, well, yeah, you've been a slave for a bit, but, well, you don't really know what it is to be a slave so we have got the two favorite body cops out on the run to try and save the woman that they both love and i thought it was pretty harsh for Jorah mormon to hear about how that daenerys is an absolute cracking shack which a bit harsh mate but we now know that the grayscale issue for Jorah is out in the open 
and this will heavily be used against him, I think, considering the ending of the episode. Now, I for one am sick of the fucking Faith Militant, and this guy's an absolute fucking douchebag, and I can't wait to see him absolutely perish at the might of the Lannisters, because let's be honest, they have messed with the wrong fucking person. And now we have a unification between the Lannisters and the Tyrells because, well, the Queen can't actually be seen to do the shame walk, can she? Because, well, it's one thing for the mother of the King to do it, but have the leader who is meant to have the utter, utter devotion of the public... Well, no, that can't happen. So we're going to be let in for a very interesting kind of few weeks as this progresses. We also saw some mentions of the Gravedigger as well. So could that be the Clergane Bowl moving forward in the not-so-background? So we got to see old The Knight of Flowers, Loras Tyrell here, look absolutely fucked. So Marjorie may have a renewed fire in her belly to fuck over anyone who's screwing her over. And, well, bonus points. I don't think he might be in this season because he's probably filming quite a lot of Iron Fist. One interesting feature is also now that the... We've got confirmation that the Tyrells are the second biggest army in Westeros, with, of course, the Lannisters being top. So we're getting a kind of numbers figure here. They're kind of showing us that who is the top dog and what the figures are for each army, as we know that the wildlings led by Jon Snow are incredibly tiny, but they do have the Knights of the Vale backing them up. So we've got Yara Greyjoy here, meeting her brother after their little encounters, but now this is very good because she has some actual help in the Kingsmoot, who Euron Greyjoy has pretty much suspended all hope of her actually getting to the top of this. So, this is going to be a very interesting episode. I mean, how much will they kind of back Theon now that he's got no winky? And also that he's pretty much fucked over any chance of really being powerful on his own. But we'll see. Now, I didn't expect her death so soon or so suddenly, but... This is pretty much served to show how evil Ramsay is, and just how much of a douchebag he is. This also does show that, well, the theory that this is all a trap, and that the Umbers kind of left the Trojan horse, are out of the window. And, well, they are definitely going to need to be saved after this. But I'm sad this character's dead, but she was a really, really good character I thought better here than in the books and the actress is very entertaining rest in peace Tonks and so we got the final part of the episode which was absolutely beyond badass now the actual burning of Daenerys is incredibly different to the books with the fact that she can only burn in the books or not burn should I say in the books when blood magic is being used. But here it's been liberally used before, and because of this absolute amazing scene, I really don't mind it being changed at all. But anyway, hope you enjoyed that episode, and I'll be back with another one very soon. Goodbye.